when the rebels attack a village, it would not be uncommon for them to say to two siblings, one of you is going to be taken today. It's up to you to decide who's going to kill who. I've heard that story too many times of um, a parent or an older brother saying, take me, or as in kill me, because I want you to live. I want you to go on. That's not unusual. Exile International exists to restore and empower war-affected children and former child soldiers. All of our programs are run by local staff, uh, men and women who have survived the same wars that these children have survived. Children who have been abducted from their families um, in Congo and in Uganda, forced to kill, forced to rape. Uh, those children, if they are rescued or they're able to escape, Exile International exists to help uh, rehabilitate them. Augustine, he said that one day after he had been abducted, he had been in the group for almost two years, and uh, the rebel commander said, hey, who, who wants to leave? I know you don't want to be here, who wants to leave? And everyone who raised their arm was shot on the spot. He's been in our program for so long, he's actually now a university student studying to be a nurse. And Baraka, who just graduated six months ago, he's meeting with 10 to 15 active rebels three days a week for a Bible study and to teach them about peace and reconciliation, the things he learned about in our program. And he is becoming that peace leader that our dream is all of them are. I chose DTS because I was looking for an integrated counseling program, a program that believed what God's Word said and believed that really did apply to our lives, but also taught great counseling practices that understood that we've learned a lot of things from the field of psychology. So what can we learn from that as well? And where's that point where these integrate and where these meet? I think it's really difficult for most here in the United States to wrap their mind around what children in Congo or Uganda have gone through, what child soldiers around the world are going through today. Their childhood really was taken away from them. I wouldn't be able to do my job if there wasn't hope for these children. But when you believe in a God that is that big, you know that that child who first shows up at the center, who is severely traumatized, often unable to speak, having nightmares every night, having flashbacks during the day, when you start seeing them heal, even taking that first step of a thousand, it's joyous. And then you see those that we now have that have graduated from the program who are now teachers, church leaders, uh, ministering to their own communities. It's fantastic. I look forward to the day whenever we see Congo not as a country of war, of decades of war, but as a place of peace because these children are the ones who have changed the fabric, that the kingdom of God is reflected there so vibrantly that the rest of the world says, I want a piece of that. And right now that doesn't exist, but someday that country will be so different.